What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss the fourth stimulus package update, stimulus check update, daily news, everything you need to know about on a daily basis. If you're new to our YouTube channel, make sure to click the subscribe down button down below. I will keep you up to date with everything going on here in our country, in Washington, D.C., and everything you need to know about as well as money investing and the stock market remember the new videos come out here on our youtube channel every day at 10 a.m 3 p.m and 8 p.m eastern standard time and if you find these videos helpful don't forget to hit the like button for us down below we got a lot to talk about here the irs has come out with an official date a huge announcement on january 24th that you're going to want to mark your calendars on uh, a lot of details on that I'm going to bring you here. Also, Republican Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell blocks a major vote last night in the Senate that the Democrats are not happy about at all. I'm going to give you the details on that and how that might lead to a major change in the Senate. And uh, anything can happen here at this point. We got a lot to talk about here, so let's jump right in. There's a lot. And it's getting to be crunch time over the Build Back Better package as Democrats are trying to decide how to get through to Senator Joe Manchin. Do they try to split it up into smaller bills or to negotiate with Senator Joe Manchin? Here's a little bit of context. White House absolutely now needs to decide, do they want to do a partial bill? Do they want to figure out what in Build Back Better Joe Manchin would support? But, you know, the oldest rule of economic theory is you got to have 50 votes if you want to do something. Um, so I, I think the infrastructure bill was a major accomplishment. I think that the, the American Rescue Plan and that we did not have something deeper and longer lived in terms of a recession coming out of the the resurgence of the virus and knock on wood, let's not let's not experience that again with with Omicron. I think those will be the major legislative accomplishments, and now they should get what they can get. But you know, we'll have to see how it goes. Austin, the, the Build Back Better bill, and then I'll get to Michael. But the Build Back Better bill was it important right now to help the economy continue healing from the pandemic? Or was it a collection of things that, that Democrats have wanted for years and years and years and years, and therefore a bridge too far, given that the, the, the you didn't have, as I said earlier, it's 50-50. It's if you want to do something transformative, instead of pillaring Joe Manchin, why don't you elect more senators? Yeah, look, 100 percent, I think they need to elect more senators. I think th th I don't believe that Build Back Better was uh, about short run stimulus. That's why I think just on factual grounds, I disagree a bit with Senator Manchin. I don't think it would have much impact on inflation up or down because it's spread out over a number of years. The impact right away wasn't very big. So I don't think it was about addressing COVID related things. I think it was about investments in human capital that that have been neglected. He does bring up a good point there. And I, I kind of think of this too. I kind of think of it more as a social infrastructure package, more so than kind of um, emergency virus stimulus relief, which is kind of, you know, Congress is discussing that right now. There's kind of two um, packages that they're considering right now for emergency virus stimulus relief, which is more of kind of what we think about when we think of stimulus check one, two, and three, and stimulus package one, two, and three, uh, two of which uh, were underneath former President Trump, and the third stimulus check, uh, which was underneath Biden, which also had the three thousand to three thousand six hundred dollar child tax credits. But the extension is in Build Back Better. But when a lot of things in Build Back Better, like reducing the cost of prescription drug pricing for over 100 million people, that should have been done for a long time. Uh, we think about we pay more than any other country in the world by a long shot. Why is that? It's not really virus related. It's like something that should have been done for a long time. We think about reducing the cost of child care. I mean, the average family that pays for child care pays like 21% of their income. It's insane. It's it's just way too expensive, and they want to reduce that down to seven percent. Should have been done for a long time. Uh, we think about Medicare benefits for seniors, hearing, dental, and vision. They want to put that in there. Of course, right now it's just hearing, 
But those are benefits that should have been in Medicare for all seniors for a long time. All these things that um, are in this package, right? Um, also, preschool should, should be paid for. When a family goes to put their child in preschool, they shouldn't have to pay $8,600 a year. The average family can't afford that, especially right now when 25% of families are living paycheck to paycheck or actually behind on their bills. 25% of families right now are behind on their bills. It's 80 million families. How can they afford to send their kid to preschool if it's $8,600 a year on average? They can't. They can't. Imagine if you had to pay $8,600 a year to send your kid to school. First grade, second grade, third grade. Nobody would go to school or not that many people. So it's just a lot of things are ridiculous. And there are a lot of things in that package that kind of like should have been done for a long time. It does kind of make sense. And he brings up an interesting point. And I'm not choosing sides here because I'll give you a little bit of scenario here. If the Democrats win one more seat in the elections here in November and have 51 senators, Joe Manchin's vote isn't really that much important because they could pass it without Joe Manchin's vote. Or if they have 52 senators, then they don't need Manchin or Cinema. Cinema hasn't even been that big of a deal. We don't even hear from her right now. It's really just Joe Manchin. So if the Democrats picked up one more vote, one more seat in the Senate, right now it's 50-50, right? So one vote could go either way. Or if the Republicans pick up one more vote in the Senate, they would have control of the Senate. It's going to be a very, very interesting midterm, as well as the House of Representatives, right, could go either way as well. It's just a few votes could go House or Senate. Remember that the House, or I mean what the House, yeah, but the House of Representatives is just a 50 simple majority. Um, and uh, you only need one vote over 50%, which is kind of getting rid of the filibuster. It's a big, big talk here. And look at what happened last night here in the Senate. Mitch McConnell at 8.53 p.m. Eastern Time last night in the Senate blocked a uh, simple majority vote that the Democrats wanted to pass. They wanted to make a uh, kind of a plea bargain deal with Republicans. And Mitch McConnell blocked it where they would have needed unanimous support from the Republicans on voting rights. And the Democrats are not happy about this. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, Republican from Kentucky, on Monday night blocked an attempt attempt from Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, Democrat from New York, to set up a simple majority vote on sweeping elections bills and legislation to bolster the 1965 Voting Rights Act, which would have allowed the Democrats to pass the two bills without Republican support. Schumer, on the Senate floor, detailed his offer to Republicans, allow the, these, two these two bills to pass and need only a simple majority vote to pass instead of needing the normal 60 votes to pass the filibuster. Uh, and in exchange, the Democrats would sign off on holding simple majority votes on nearly 20 bills that Republicans placed on the Senate calendar, which makes them available for a vote but doesn't guarantee they'll get one. Chuck Schumer quote, says, quote, we Democrats aren't afraid of these votes. So what I propose to the Republican leader is the Senate hold up or down votes at a majority threshold on each of the Republican bills he has outlined tonight, as well as the Freedom to Vote Act and the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act, Schumer said. McConnell, however, rejected Schumer's offer without elaborating on the objection. Under the Senate rules, any one senator can try to set up a vote or pass a bill. But because it requires sign-off from the full Senate, any one senator can also object and block this request, which Mitch McConnell did. Now, Democrats can change the rules on this. They can change the filibuster. As you can see here, to change the rules, Democrats need total unity from all 50 of their members, something they don't have yet. Senator Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema both support a supermajority requirement for legislation, while other senators like Mark Kelly haven't yet taken a position. 
but they can change the filibuster with 50 votes, and then the tiebreaker vote would go to the vice president, Kamala Harris, and they could basically change this filibuster carve out. And uh, Mitch McConnell did this with the Republicans uh, when they changed the filibuster for appointing Supreme Court justices. Here's a little more context on this from uh, Democrat Representative Ro Khanna and a position on the uh, stimulus package as well. Let me ask you about legislation. Um, we know that over in the Senate, uh, Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is going to uh, introduce some legislation to try to carve out uh, some exception of the filibuster to get some movement on um, uh, voting rights protections. And here's what Senator Joe Manchin, who's opposed to any changes to uh, the filibuster without Republican buy-in, this is what he said a few moments ago. Let me just say that, that, that to being open to uh, a rules change that would uh, create a nuclear option, uh, it, it's, it's a very, very difficult. So it's a heavy lift. And the reason I say it's a heavy lift is that once... Uh, you change uh, a rule or you have a carve out. And I've always said this, uh, anytime there's a, a, a carve out, uh, you eat the whole turkey. <laughs> there's nothing left because it comes back and forth. So you want things that will be sustainable. Sustainable, by that he means Republican buy-in. He's been clear about this for months now. Is there anything uh, substantive that you think that could get Republicans buy-in at all? Because that's really what uh, Senator Manchin uh, wants, that you could get through that would, that would protect the right to vote that we see uh, disintegrating across uh, several states because of this new legislation. Anything that can happen. Unfortunately, not with Republican buy-in. I mean, they haven't been willing to vote for the John Lewis Act. Is Republican state legislatures that, let's be clear, are disenfranchising black voters, are disenfranchising young voters. And here's what I would say. McConnell used an exception to the filibuster to get Supreme Court justices on. So he's already said there ought to be a carve-out. Why can't we have a carve-out to the filibuster to protect the sacred right to vote? Why is it controversial in this country that every person, regardless of their race should vote. I, I, don't, I just don't understand why we can't have voting rights to protect every person's right to vote. And we ought to keep pushing for it, mobilizing for it. This ought to be our top priority. Well, Senator Manchin has been clear about his opposition to that, Senator Sinema as well. One more on, on Senator Manchin. He was also asked about uh, moving forward on the Build Back Better Act. But he said that there are some elements of the bill he can get behind, specifically on the climate elements. If you can't get paid family leave, if you can't get the child tax credit expansion uh, extended, uh, are you willing to find those like individual elements that the, that the senator is behind that, that should go through, that, that you in the House, uh, the Progressive Caucus, can get together and get passed? I'm willing to compromise. I've had good conversations with Senator Manchin. I believe he's open to getting to a compromise and getting something done. We need to engage him in good faith. We need to have a dialogue with him in the White House, and we need to see what can we agree on to deliver for the American public. So I understand it's not going to be what we passed in the House. We're going to have to compromise, and I'm open to doing that. Okay, and next up, January 24th is going to be an important day for millions of Americans. It is going to be the first day that Americans are going to be able to file their tax returns for 2021. And you're probably going to want to file early this year because the IRS is already saying, quote, it's going to be a frustrating one. This is coming directly from the IRS. Uh, in fact, this is from Market Watch. This is from the Wall Street Journal. The IRS warns of service delays when 2021 tax filing se season opens on January 24th. The agency has several million pieces of backlogged work from prior years. Ouch, I can already hear the complaints now. Yeah, I guess the good news here is that this tax season, this starting date on January 24th, is two weeks earlier than they allowed us to file last year. So they know that they're going to be in for, <laughs> the IRS is going to be in for it this year. So they're actually allowing us to file two weeks earlier than last year to kind of get a head start on it. So um, 
there's going to be a lot of delays. So if you're due for a refund this year, you're probably going to want to try to file on January 24th. Now, I believe if you're filing through an online software, you may be able to file early, but they will just, the softwares will just actually hold it and officially file it on January 24th. January 24th is the earliest day the IRS will accept it. But uh, yeah, as you can see here, the IRS warns that they're uh, millions of pieces behind already. And yeah, some people are still waiting on their tax returns. Some people are still waiting on their $10,200 unemployment tax-free provision. From uh, That's for 2020, actually. Uh, that was from 2021. That was retroactive to 2020. People waiting on that refund as well. And uh, the IRS actually says it's going to be a frustrating one. But nonetheless, this is going to be a big day because... Um, on January 24th, you can actually start the filing. And uh, my recommendation to anybody is try to file electronically because then you will get your refund electronically. They'll just direct deposit it to your bank account. That's number one, a lot more secure. And number two, you will get it a lot faster. Gets put right into your bank account. So if you're, if you're getting a refund, whether it's a dollar, thousand dollars or whatever it is gets put right into your bank account just like uh you know any other thing that comes from the irs if you're waiting on a paper check oh my goodness if you've ever waited on a stimulus check paper check oh my goodness it takes forever okay it could take weeks or even a month longer okay and uh you, you don't want to do that and also if you set up your tax returns to do electronically that, that also sets you up for stimulus checks on electronic deposits, and I believe it sets you up for child tax credits on direct deposits. I'm not 100% sure about that one, but I think that's how it goes. I think you can maybe change that, but I know that the general rule of thumb is, is that uh, if you set up your tax returns on electronic deposits, that kind of sets you up for the other things on direct deposit as well. So if there's a stimulus check four that comes in 2022, you want to do your tax returns um, through electronic deposits so that you get that stimulus check faster. So you get that stimulus check faster because you know if you if you waited for a stimulus check on a paper check, boy, you know waiting for that sucks. Uh, yeah, for, for lack of a better, uh, French term there, uh, <laughs> yeah, you can, you can wait for that mail. And, and the other thing is that the direct deposits go out like, like that, that third stimulus check, I think it went out like two days after they approve it, or the, at least the third stimulus check, the first and second stimulus check, it took them longer, be, especially the first one, because they were like, it approved. And then that the IRS was like, Oh my God, what do we do? And the second one was a little bit faster. And the third one, though, the third one, they're like, all right, we, we know what we're doing here this time. And I remember that they they passed it, they approved it, and I was still reporting this like, oh, my God, we got it approved. And people were, were literally reporting on the second day, Jimmy, I already got the check. And I was reading the comments, and I was like, no way. And they were like, they had like a thousand comments already. We got the check already, Jimmy. And I was like, wow. That's the beauty of direct deposit. And you set that up with your tax returns. So if you're not on direct deposit, 2021 is your chance to get on direct deposit. So file your taxes electronically through TurboTax or whatever software you use. <laughs> my accountant does all that. And my accountant is my wife's father, my father-in-law. He's literally amazing. Uh, so... You know, or, or go to your accountant or your tax repair, or your local H&R Block or whoever you use. Um, but it, it's one, it's more secure because you can't lose your check in the mail, whether it's your stimulus check or your refund check. You can't lose it in the mail and you get a lot faster. OK, so more secure and faster. Can't lose your check in the mail and you get it right away. Win, 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 win. Direct deposit right into your bank account. The only negative I would say there is you can't change bank accounts, okay? Um, I mean, maybe you could 
but like you don't want to be changing bank accounts, okay? Because uh, you know if your if the IRS goes to deposit your refund or your stimulus check into your bank account and it's closed six months later, that's probably the only negative I can think of. If there's any other negatives I can think of, comment down below. Uh, so you do got to keep that in mind. You know, I'm not the type of person that like, you know, I just kind of stick with my bank account, my checking account, or anything like that. Um, if you're the type of person that's like, you know, switching banks frequently, then maybe you don't want to do that. You know, that's kind of as I'm just kind of thinking through this, right? Um, but yeah, if you have any other kind of uh, advice, tips, or tricks there, comment down below. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking here. But January 24th, mark that on your current calendar. Uh, you're probably not going to, if you're due for a refund, you're probably not going to be one of those one of people that is going to want to wait till April 15th to file your taxes this year. Because I'll tell you, if you file it on April 15th, you know, you know how like in past years, You'd be one of those people like rush into the mailbox to put it in the mailbox on April 15th, right? Right? Can I been one of those people? I've been there before, right? You go to April 15th and you're putting it in the mailbox on April 15th, right? Or maybe even April 16th if it fell on like a weekend and you got that extra day. Probably not going to want to do that this year if you're waiting on a refund, especially because here's what's going to happen. April 15th, you're going to put it in the mailbox, right? And then what's going to happen is... It's going to take them months and months and months to process. And you're going to be commenting to me on like Christmas of 2022. And you'll be like, Jimmy, I'm still waiting for my refund, bro. Where is it? And I'm going to be like, yeah, man, the IRS is, is really, really far behind. And I'm going to be like, remember that video I posted on uh, January 11th, 2022, saying mark that date, January 24th? Yeah, that was some good advice. So you definitely going to want to mark that day, January 24th. Talk to your tax preparer, your accountant, or if you do it yourself, start on that now. Uh, if you do it um, through an online service or something, TurboTax or whoever you use, you might even want to start doing it now. Um, I think you can file those things now and even do them now, and they'll just hold it for you and then file it on the 24th. I may or may not be wrong on that. You guys can let me know um, if you do it yourself um, or you just get it all ready and then submit it on the 24th. But that's kind of my... Uh, overall recommendations there for you um don't delay on this if you're if you're due for a refund if you're due for a refund and you want that money you're not going to want to wait because here's what's going to happen they're good they're going to be behind so even just following out on january 24th who knows how long it's going to take it might take a month two months you it, getting it done first you might get you know might get it quickly right but if you get behind the the bulk of the people that's where there might be those big, long delays, right? And who knows? Either way, getting it done at the beginning is going to be beneficial for you. It's just going to be less of a wait, right? The longer you wait, the longer your refund takes. So, yeah, mark that date down. I'll keep you up to date here with everything because, uh, hey, no one wants to wait on refund money. If you're waiting on refund money, uh, <laughs> get that in. So yeah, click down here to subscribe if you haven't yet uh, to our YouTube channel. It's completely free to do so, so you don't miss out on new videos that come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll have a lot of new things coming out for you, as well as stimulus checks, stimulus package updates, and everything going on here in our country. You can also share this video down below to share this video with your family and friends so that they don't miss out on anything going on here on a daily basis as well. You can click here to watch my newest video next, and you can click here to watch my video about the $2,000 stimulus checks hopefully coming out this year as well. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks, guys, and I will see you in the next video.